the next stage of this AI revolution. It's about the use cases because now the build out's happening. It's not just about NVIDIA chips, but when you look at what's happened with OpenAI, you look at ultimately Oracle, Microsoft. I mean, now you're really seeing this multiply. And, and I believe that will separate the winners from the pretenders. And I think investors, it's a stock picker's market, especially when it comes to tech. So in terms, and I know you, you've got your own product as well, where you're picking the winners. And the, are there any obvious names that you see out there that, that our viewers and your clients say, well, look, look at the valuations one. And you say, it's just not going to be part of the winners. Some of the, 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 the software players, the picks and shovels companies as well, who are just getting a rising tide wrongly, though. Yeah, look, I mean, I, that's, we have the Ives AI 30, and, and that's something that we're always focused on because it's not just about big tech. It's about in software, who are the winners? I mean, look at, you know, when you think about infrastructure, names like GE Renova, Nebesis, you know, you, you okay, where does Core we fit? You look at autonomous and robotics, which is another area, and you know, we think Tesla continues to be front and center there. To me, it's really going to be about the second, third, fourth derivatives as this all plays out. I mean, that that's going to be the key. But you talk about pretenders, look, the next six, nine, 12 months, it separates. I mean, in other words, who executes, where the spending is, and that's how names like Palantir have gone from teenager to, you know, what I believe on, on track to a trillion dollar valuation next two or three years. Uh, Dan, yeah, Palantir, fascinating story. We spoke to the company the other day. I want to get to you one of the risks because the industry has become so incestuous. What you've seen in terms of Jensen Huang bankrolling just about every company or partnering with every company on the planet is one or the other. And of course, the biggest one lately has been the NVIDIA tie up with OpenAI. Is this a worry for you, almost like dominoes that have capital markets shut and there's a problem with one of these companies that it just has blowed back right across the whole sector? Yeah, well, you've seen some of those worries, but but see, I, I look at it differently. I mean, for every dollar that NVIDIA puts in, they're going to ultimately get $10, 12 $15 back, right, in terms of revenue as this bill that actually happens. And, and my view is, like, we're only in the beginning. I mean, because you're thinking only 3% of companies have gone down the AI path just in the U.S. So think about the international expansion. Think about all the things we saw in the U.K., then you go back over the last few months, Middle East. I mean, this this is essentially building Dubai from the beginning. It's building Vegas where there's no buildings, right? I mean, you're building out the new infrastructure. I just don't view it negatively. I view it as just part of the, you know, really what's going to be this fourth industrial revolution, just playing out. Yeah, the pathway getting to AGI, having the super intelligence, clearly uh, what that next revolution is. But to me, there are some companies that have very deep pockets that have been slightly less active than others in terms of some of these collaborations and partnerships, and namely Meta, Mark Zuckerberg, who's been also cozying up to the U.S. president, so trying to play the politics of the day. Maybe Amazon you could throw into the mix as well. And, of course, Apple. How do you think about whether these three companies and others will be dragged into this partnership collaboration world? Look, I mean, it's an AI arms race that's happening, right? So do they actually go down this path or, or another, or do they join forces? Like, I believe Apple and Google ultimately going to join forces when it comes to AI, when it comes to Gemini, because that DOJ suit is obviously unfavorable. But look, no big tech company washes from the outside looking in. And I think that's the reality. So in other words, if you partner, if you go out alone, the reality is, is that this CapEx, it's a CapEx super cycle. And that's going to continue for the next few years, which is why we believe this tech bull market, and we've talked about it in your show, I think it goes on for another two to three years. Yeah, Dan, it looks like an OPEX super cycle, too, if you're plugging into the hyperscalers. And let me ask you about Intel, because the fortunes of this company have changed overnight, thanks to President Trump. All the different deals coming in from SoftBank to uh, the other backing of the company from other big tech names uh, and NVIDIA. I want to ask you about how this changes investing because I think the market was picking the new chip winners, but now we have an old chip winner that's coming to the mix. Is it better to play a basket of stocks when it comes to chips or would you just buy single names? Look, I think, I mean, that's why we have our Ives AI 30. I don't think you could just own one name. Like, look, in 2023, 2024, 
no matter who I met, where in the world, it's like, okay, yeah, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and you buy NVIDIA stock. That That's what you do. But now it's spread. Look, you look at Intel. I mean, they got a lifeline, right? It was a pop to champagne moment in terms of not just getting from the U.S. government backing, but of course NVIDIA, because now it brings them into the AI game. But I think it just shows you could have some old school companies. I mean, look at Oracle. If you go back a year ago to where it is today, but it shows the install bases. This is, look, that's why this is really now, it's new rules of the game. And I think you you look at innovation, that's going to separate the winners from the losers. Dan, we've got about 30 seconds left. Is there anything about the valuation of Palantir or OpenAI, obviously different sides of the private-public divide that scares you? Nothing. Well, it doesn't scare me because I think the street is underestimating where growth is. And I've always said, if you look at just valuation over one year, you've missed every transformational growth stock the last 20 years, right? And that's the bears, when they're in hibernation mode, they don't see that in the spreadsheets. And that's why I think Palantir, trillion-dollar market, next two or three years, they're playing chess, everyone else playing checkers.